Welcome everyone to the DeSera Group's webinar, Training Auditors in a Virtual World. Thank you for attending. I'm looking over the list of attendees and I see a lot of names that I know from other contexts and a bunch of new names as well. So welcome, welcome to everyone. My name is Karen Rawson and I'm the Vice President of the DeSera Group. In my role, I'm largely responsible for developing our training and uh, delivering it as well as um, as well as consulting on management system implementation across standards like ISO 9001, ISO 27001, TL 9000, and others. What the DeSera Group does is uh, we bring in often with a company, a typical client would be we bring in a uh, a training package for awareness. What is the uh, what is the standard that the company wants to work toward? And then we work on an implementation plan and shepherd them through implementation, getting all ready for certification, ending our role at that phase with performing a full system audit so they're ready for their certification audit. Well, all of that used to be done in person, of course, but over the last year, this kind of hit everyone, the Sarah as well as our clients. We have been doing virtual instructor-led training for years, but a lot of clients weren't quite ready for that. And now it's picked up. It seems that people understand that, you know, ad adapt or struggle. These are the new rules for auditing. If we don't get used to virtual and we don't adapt, we're going to struggle. It's the new normal. I, I wrote this slide back in um, March or April working with a client and I realized that uh, that it applied to pretty much everything everyone's doing at work, getting used to not being in person. So how do we adapt that to the auditing world? Well, I think a lot of people thought they could just open a laptop and start auditing, but um, it doesn't quite work that way. There's a lot more that goes into preparing for an audit. A third rule for auditing in the new normal is that yes, you can conduct audits remotely if the audit objectives can be achieved. And that goes for internal audits, supplier audits, and CB audits, uh, all three. Because uh, if you can't meet the audit objectives, for example, if you need to go in someplace and actually detect the smell, and you can't do that yet via virtual tools, you can't meet the objectives of an audit. But if you're working on screen, for example, doing a lot of information security, auditing over practices and records and anything that's very records heavy, you may be able to meet the full objectives of the audit without needing to go on site. So we'll talk in this webinar about how to prepare auditors for performing these remote audits. Here's our agenda for today. We'll talk about who needs training and why and then how to train them. And then we'll get into what needs to be included in auditor training. And I'll end with giving you six tips for auditing in a virtual world around uh, after, after covering how to do a risk assessment of your business before you move or of a process before you move into, um, into auditing it remotely. Now, I will take questions and provide answers at the end of the webinar. I have two people monitoring the, uh, the question tab. So go ahead and hit the question pad on your control panel if you'd like to ask any questions and I'll cover those at the end. So who needs training and why? Well, as I said, internal auditors can't just open the laptop and start auditing. Neither can supplier auditors who are very much used to flying off to wherever the, the supplier is and auditing them in person. There are many parts to supplier auditor team, uh, aud supplier audits that are different from internal audits and you need to be able to train your supplier auditors to do those skills as well. Well, CB auditors and AB assessors have had their world turned upside down. They're sitting on their sofa doing audits these days instead of trekking all over the country. A lot of people wonder, is this the new normal for CB audits? Well, CBs are finding that that's what their clients are asking for more and more, and will probably be moving more toward a hybrid model with uh, some parts of audits or some audit days on site. Some, uh, maybe, maybe one or two of the surveillance audits might be done remotely. And there are some interesting techniques that can be explored when we're doing audits remotely that we talk about in training. For example, the ability to audit a process from end to end, regardless of where it happens. That's something that'll take CB auditors a little longer to catch up with, but internal auditors and supplier auditors can be trained on and begin using now. 
And then finally, people tend to forget that we do need to also train our auditees. They need to become comfortable with our techniques and with how to prepare for being audited where they might be used to just pulling out binders of information or going to file drawers. What's different for them? Well, as I said, the DeSera Group has been teaching virtual courses and performing remote audits for over 10 years. This isn't new to us. And so the purpose of this audit today is not just to give you information that you can use to work with training your internal auditors right off the bat, but also to offer to Sarah's services to come in and do training for both your new auditors and your advanced auditors to pick up the remote audit skills. And we'd like you to, to feel free to get in touch with us. And uh, my contact information will be at the end of the meeting as well as in all of the, uh, all of the mailers that you've gotten. So we do this to introduce you to our services as well as a service to our clients and future clients to be able to uh, learn more about internal auditing. Now getting into how to train auditors. Just a second here. Uh, let's see. Oh my goodness. <laughs> It appears that I, is, is my microphone on? I hope that it's on. Dave, can you hear me? Yes, I can, miss. Okay, there were, I, I, I took, a, um, I took a, a second to look at some of the questions and some people had said, I can't hear you. And I was a little bit afraid of that maybe I'd given 10 minutes of a webinar without anybody being, pre being able to hear. <laughs> okay, so getting on with how to train auditors. The first thing you do in any kind of training you, um, you, uh, you do with your, with your staff is to figure out what are the skills that they need to be able to not just learn about, but be able to demonstrate. Competence involves what they know, what they need to know, and what they need to demonstrate. You can have internally developed training, you can have externally sourced training, which Desera offers. And also, this is a good time for you to add to your company refresher skills training on maybe auditors who've been trained some years back. And you'd be surprised how much, whenever I teach a, an advanced audit training class, where people say, wow, I'd never looked at it that way before. Or now I understand how this meets up with that and how to coordinate and what I'm really supposed to be looking at. Advanced internal auditor training is so valuable to companies that have had their, um, their internal auditors working for a long time with no continuing ed. Well, how to train auditors. I recommend for, the, um, for training auditors to perform virtual audits that you use the virtual instructor-led training. In other words, don't send someone off to read about it or take an online course where all they do is flip through slides. Get them involved in a virtual instructor-led training process because then they can, uh, the trainees can actually practice with web conferencing tools. In fact, in the Tessera Group's virtual audit, internal audit skills class, we go through an actual audit. They actually go out and audit a process within their company so that they can come back and report to the group what worked, what didn't work well, and they can practice those skills right off the bat. When you're training internal auditors, you need to cover the what ifs, the best practices that people have learned about scheduling and using, um, using digital tools and what to do in sticky situations. That works very well in a small group instead of a mass conference like we have today with, um, with uh, many, many people on the call. It's important when you train your auditors to train them so that they can use those skills as soon as possible after training. Studies show that retention goes way, way down. Like, a, like within, within a month of training, trainees have lost something like 60% of their newfound knowledge if they haven't put it to use right away. So one of the things that the Sarah Group does with our virtual internal audit training courses is you're not in class all day long. Your exercises are done off the phone. Um, maybe on your computer because you're using virtual methods, but you don't have the instructor right there with you. So you have to give it a try and then come back and report in the next session of class how things actually went and what came up. You want to do a competence check in any of your in any of your auditor training skills. So they should complete 
a remote auditing readiness checklist before every audit. That's what I'm going to share with you at the end of this session. It's kind of a risk assessment to see if the organization is ready for its remote audit. And so the auditor should complete that remote auditing readiness checklist before the audit so that they can reinforce their training and know that everything's in place and they won't have a um, they won't have any glitches that are the typical gotchas. You want to reinforce the training um, by having systematic processes within your company. So when I work with a company to bring in internal auditor Karen, we lost our video, our audio. Can you hear me? Training it says that my microphone is actually working. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay. Must have been a temporary glitch. So when I work with my clients, I make sure that they've updated their internal procedures. Uh, that if there are any templates that they use that require, uh, that may need to be updated to adapt to the virtual method, their tools that they're using are consistent, and that they communicate the new methods to both auditors and to auditees. This is something new and you need to socialize the concept. So auditors in our classes are trained how to, um, how, how to communicate with everyone and update all their internal tools. Now this little, uh, this is probably common. Every one of us has experienced this. The boss guy says, we're about to, we're meeting to talk about call and suddenly he goes silent. Like what just happened where Dave couldn't hear me and everybody's talking back and forth. Should we wait? And finally someone comes in late and now the person's able to talk again. We just actually experienced that. So we need to have technology training as well as preparing the auditees. What Dave and I, for example, for this morning have is we've got a primary plan where I'm delivering the um, where I'm delivering the slides and the speaking, and the backup plan would be for Dave to take over. You also want to train them on what not to use. You don't want to use um, ad hoc methods that other people aren't familiar with or that have security risks in them. And then you need to train the auditees so they're used to the technology that'll be used. And you want to train them to have their documented information available. So there are some people who are used to inputting records, but they're not sure where to go to go get them and display them as easily. They need to be able to quickly access those records or have a technical expert next to them who's able to access records that may be requested during an audit. That would be part of your preparing your auditees and having your auditors know how to train their auditees so they don't just walk in cold. It's a collaborative effort. With our new remote workforce, we've all had to go through what are our confidentiality rules. For example, can you co conduct an audit by sitting in Starbucks and talking about it and having, having a company's confidential information displayed on your screen? Um, can you send things back and forth over your personal phone camera? So within your company, you need to decide what are the security rules? How are we going to transfer files? What, what confidentiality rules do we have with our suppliers and our customers when they audit us? As well as talking to people about what not to do. This one says, are you ready to start the audit? Oh, we can't see your slides. And uh, well, do you need to, should we put on uh, this, uh, this app or that app, or I'll just send you, my, send you my slides and they're going back and forth. And finally, Nobody has a way to get involved. Uh, can you just fax it to us? So you want to check all your security methods in advance. Be sure that they work on both ends. So there's an additional amount of pre-audit preparation that doesn't necessarily need to go into on-site audits. They have different requirements. When you're preparing for your audit, and this is something to train your auditors to do in advance, check the sound quality in the actual audit locations. So if you're planning on going out into a loud production floor or even being in a cubicle where you can talk to each other back and forth when you're side by side in a, in a cube next to a production floor, but you can't really hear each other due to the background noise. Otherwise, you need to check those in advance so you don't have several people sitting around while you figure out how to, um, how to actually be able to hear one another. 
be careful with how many people you include in internal in your um, audits because what can happen is you get so many people in there that that makes it hard to hear so don't just have everyone who's possibly involved be on the call with you maybe have them on call so they can step in as needed or at the very minimum have everybody mute except the one person you're talking to i think it's also a good idea particularly for first-time auditors to have an audit team member or a designated rep for the site if you're doing a full site audit who is available to perform tech support either they're on the call with you or they're available by cell phone in case anything goes wrong you know who that kind of person is maybe it's somebody from it or maybe it's just the audit team member who's able to figure out how to work zoom or teams or go to meeting or go to webinar or whatever it might be include in your audit training conventions for etiquette okay there are people who are used to being always on and they want to be able to handle their text messages and handle their phone calls and just in and out of the meeting but have those have that etiquette explained in advance so what we teach auditors to explain to people in advance is that if i'm going to have you for more than 15 minutes um, i'll uh, we, we want you to be fully present if you're going to be 15 minutes or less it's just going to be a short time so please just be please be able to put those things on hold we'll we'll have you back in 15 minutes or less um, it's hard when people are jumping in and out of audits so your company etiquette may differ from others but clarify that at the beginning of the audit that i'm going to have you for 15 minutes i'm going to have you for an hour i need your full attention during this time or let the person know you're an as needed person um, if you could just be on mute and I'll wave my hand at you if I need you, then that's okay too. But be sure that you can uh, communicate that before the audit starts and teach your auditors to be comfortable with people talking about uh, conventions for doing internal audits, for doing remote audits. Now you also need to determine security requirements and other requirements that may be related to COVID-19 or just other, we're not allowed to bring cameras in this area. The guy says, I don't remember agreeing to a surveillance drone when I installed the app. Yeah, it's right in there after the cavity search clause. We can sometimes go a little far with requirements for security, but if your company already has notices like these posted, you need to work around those and be able to allow your um, supplier auditor, you know, the, the customer who comes to visit you or, you, or if you're going into a customer site, into a supplier site, or if you've got special security requirements where ordinarily photos and videos wouldn't be allowed, but you need special, special dispensation to do a remote audit, you'd probably also have security requirements like destruction of any recordings that were made during that period. One of the things we go over in auditor training is the soft skills. How do you manage somebody who says, well, I don't agree with that, or, um, well, uh, I'm uncomfortable being on camera. A lot of times I've seen hourly employees get very nervous when they come into a meeting room instead of in their regular production area. You know, they're brought in one-on-one -on -one to answer audit skills. So in our auditor training for both internal audit, virtual instructor-led training, and in the advanced class, we talk about soft skills that go toward making sure that we're getting the best possible uh, interviews from our audits. Now let's move into um, a little bit more about what to include in auditor training. In order to write an audit report, you have to be able to say that you either fulfilled the audit objectives or you've got open items and you can't complete the audit. So you have to ask that fundamental question to begin. The best way to do that is to assess the risks of being able to complete the audit objectives in advance and mitigate those risks. So for example, if you have places where you can't take a camera, get special dispensation to do so in advance and what security requirements are there for. Um, teach your auditors to look in advance of what might cause us to not be able to complete our full audit. And then look for opportunities to improve the process. I'm not talking about the process you're auditing, but your internal audit process or your supplier audit process. But don't just go out and start doing things without making sure that they're okay with the powers that be. Make sure that you get a chance to test those and get them approved 
like any process. You don't go around changing the process without proper approvals. Therefore, your audit report should be able to include any limitations of the remote audit or any items that you would need to follow up on site in order to complete the audit. I understand from some CBs that that's something that they occasionally have to do. They have to say, these were limitations, we're within the three-year period, we'll catch them on the next go-round, or maybe maybe create a half day to go in and finish the audit when they're in that city for another um, for another purpose. It's a special targeted audit where they don't have to interact with as many people, so they remain COVID safe and meeting site requirements. But your report needs to include those limitations and explain the method that you used. And now as we move towards the end of the, of the webinar, I'm gonna give you a few key takeaway slides. So you may wanna get ready to screenshot these, or if you have, I forgot to mention it, there's a handout in this webinar. If you look under handouts, there was a note taking, uh, note taking page for this you can download that and take notes as you begin as, as you go through this or as you share this with anyone afterwards the four essential skills for remote auditors that we make sure to teach in all of our courses first of all the technology we go through the different types of um, platforms that a company may work on uh, go to meeting and zoom and webex and um, uh, all uh, teams and all the different uh, platforms that anyone can bring up we try to bring those up see their pros and cons make sure everybody's had a chance to deal with them unless it's an internal audit and there's one that they that they, that's the go-to for that company so we just work with that platform in the audit to make sure that they can uh, they can smoothly move between all the different technical um, features of that app for example do they want to annotate do they want to uh, trade screens? Do they want to both show screens at the same time? Do they need to have breakout rooms? Go through those different, um, different uh, possibilities of the technology with testing and practicing in advance. So we do that in the classroom, but if you're training your own auditors, you want to be sure that you give them a chance to practice with the tools in advance, not just learn about them, but physically practice with them. Because it's a skill that they need to show competence in before they can do the job not just open the laptop and start auditing. Second essential skill is planning. We mentioned confidentiality and security. You wanna plan for any places that you may or may not be able to do, um, that you may or may not be able to bring cameras or how you're going to send documents back and forth. You want to plan for the place, the timing and the restrictions, just like in any audit, but the place may need to be moved. You may need to take something from a noisy place to a quiet place or from a dimly lit place to a brighter place. So look at any issues with that when you're planning the audit so that you make sure that you can actually hear and see the things that you need to hear. And then we talked about participation. Uh, brief your auditees in advance on the methods and so forth and make sure you have a tech support person on the side. We go through those in training and then people are expected to continue those with their checklist in advance, be sure they've done that sort of planning. We go through soft skills, as I mentioned. Sometimes on the phone, for example, on a, on a remote call, it's hard to make sure that everyone is being heard. There are people lurking who may not be showing their cameras and it falls on the auditor to make sure that they're talking to all the different people they wanna be able to talk to, know the, um, the, uh, the tolerance of the company for noise and interruptions and tech glitches. There may be some people who are very uncomfortable. How do you deal with those? We talk through those in, in training and I advise you to at least have a workshop with your internal auditors and talk about the what ifs, the concerns they have with remote auditing. And then finally, we'll move into the risk assessment next. You need to do a risk assessment for your overall audit and then repeat that for each audit to be sure that you are prepared and can mitigate any of those uh, risks in advance, as well as maybe find some ways that you can improve on what the audit process is, as stated in the, in the training or in the conventions that you've come up with for your company. This is what we have for the organizational risk assessment. And in the follow-up messages, I'll be sending out um, a, a a form that you can use for this in PDF and uh, uh, Word format that you can use for as a checklist for your company. But these are things you wanna look at for your organization. Is there an established culture for virtual meetings? When I first put this out there, when we've done virtual training in the past, that answer was probably no for a lot of companies, but now I'll bet that's in place. So it doesn't just apply to the people who are 
um, who are at the top in your internal audits, but throughout the company, all the people you talk to, are they prepared for virtual meetings or do you need to do some prep calls with them? Is the technology for remote auditing adequate? Do your cameras have high enough resolution and do you have ways to share things back and forth? Internally, are they going to be sending you links to documents or are they going to be displaying them on a screen? Or what if everything is in paper format or has to be viewed physically? Is the technology adequate? Go through security and data protection policies and methods, think them through, approve them, and then be sure you practice them. If they haven't been thought through, they're gonna be all over the map. I mentioned uh, the documented information needs to be readily available online or have a workaround how that can be done. Maybe having a, uh, an assistant to the auditor who's on site and can look for certain things. You wanna be sure that compliance and effectiveness can be assessed remotely. That has to do with, can you meet the objectives for the audit? Don't plan an audit that requires you to be physically present to feel humidity and check intricate little dials that you can't see when you're, when you're um, with the resolution of the camera that you have. Make sure you don't do those things on site if there are any required on site activities. Look for, now this is one that, that on an internal audit, hopefully you wouldn't have problems with, but if you were doing a supplier audit or a CB audit, you want to make sure that um, is there a risk of somebody avoiding showing you something? Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. He's just doing everything without defined processes and measures and so forth. You want to look, is there any way that this company could be trying to show me something that's not real? Shouldn't be a problem in internal audits, but you definitely want to cover that and see if, um, if there's any reason why you need to actually go on site to see something. And then you want to um, make sure before you audit that procedures, templates, and tools are updated for the audit process itself so that you're not going outside of your process and doing something that uh, you're already going to get a non-conformance because you're not following your process. And then making sure that your auditors have been trained and competence has been demonstrated. So I'll send this out in usable form as well as some other things that you'll be getting from me over time, as long as you make Desera Group whitelisted on your, um, on your uh, email. And now we'll end with six tips for auditing in the virtual world. You wanna conduct an organizational readiness check and an audit risk assessment before you audit to be sure the audit objectives can be met with your remote audit or find a workaround if you have to be able to go on site. Second tip for auditing, test and practice both your primary and your backup platforms. So if you think you're using Teams, but you have Zoom as a backup, for each participant and location, don't just do it with the audit organizer, but try it if you're going out on the floor, try it if you're, if you're auditing across different sites. This takes extra time and planning, and you really need to do it in order to have the audit because audits are always pressed for time. We always feel like we could use more time to ask questions, so don't be messing around with technical stuff or make sure you do allow time in your audit schedule for people to all come together and get those things working. Auditors need to be sure they've been trained and that their documentation and tools have been updated. So if you haven't done that at this late state in the, uh, in the virtual world, it's definitely time to step up and do that. When you're auditing, realize that you may be getting uh, auditing ac across processes or auditing remotely. Remember that some countries, some time zones uh, may not work as well as you'd like to think, and you've got to plan around those. If you're planning for an audit of China during Chinese New Year, good luck. Or if you're trying to get somebody up at six o'clock in the morning in California, be sure you've allowed them to have their first cup of coffee first before you bring them into the audit. Um, and make sure that you can meet requirements for social distancing and so forth for anybody who does need to be on site. Make sure you have a technology helper for uh, online for every audit, at least available by a quick phone call. That'll make your audits go much more smoothly in case anything goes wrong. And then finally, make sure you socialize the remote auditing concept so that all interviewees are prepared for the changes. I, I just I just hate the feeling that I've had when we've brought people into for when we're doing we do internal audits for our clients they outsource their internal audits to us 
And I just feel awful when somebody who's not used to being on camera comes in and they're expected to be on camera and they're worried about how they look. And it's like, look, you didn't put a paper bag over your head to come to work today. You look fine for the camera. You know, this is not gonna be shared at your retirement party. So remember above all for auditing in the virtual world that things will go wrong that you hadn't expected. So have patience and be flexible and then use those tips to, um, to uh, continually improve your audit process. Now, as I said, the DeSera Group has been teaching virtual courses and performing remote audits for over 10 years. So I just wanna let you know that we use virtual instructor-led training for our audit, where we allow auditees to practice with those web conferencing tools. Our internal auditing virtual instructor-led course starts at $4,900, it takes place over a series of days. We're very flexible in working with your company. We could do it in uh, three solid days of end-to-end of, uh, -end like your kids do on, uh, on, on Zoom all day for school, but we found that it works better, and we'll be flexible with you, but we found it works better with a series of spaced modules where you could do your, your workshops, your exercises in between the, the online modules, and we come back and talk about them. So we do an internal auditor virtual instructor-led training as well as an advanced auditor training, VILT. That's a shorter course and it costs less, but please get in touch with me. You've got my email from the, um, from the uh, webinar and I'll show it at the end as well. Get in touch and see how DeSera might be able to support you. But whether or not you are needing training from outside, these would be your steps to getting comfortable with remote auditing. Do your organizational readiness assessment, Close any gaps if you need new technology or, or um, if you need to work with the, the competence and, and do a competence check of your auditors, be sure they're able to perform audits. Socialize the concepts so people feel comfortable with what you're doing, and then go ahead and perform the audits with continual improvement. As I deliver this, uh, this um, webinar, I realize a lot of companies may have just put off doing their audits until we get back to normal. And you can't do that. You need, if business is happening, you need to keep up on your internal audit schedule. If you don't know how to perform the audits, uh, if, if you're uncomfortable performing audits remotely, that's something that you can outsource to the DeSera group. And you might be surprised to find the types of things that DeSera finds in audits because we're able to go deeper. We're not involved in the day-to-day -day operation. And you might find that outsourcing, at least for this year, get one round of audits or get caught up is just what your company needs. So with that, I've made record time in this, in this webinar. I'd like to thank you for attending, give you back a half an hour. But uh, for those of you who have questions or you'd like to stay on the call for a little while, I'd uh, be very happy to entertain any questions. Let's see. I see some things where people said they kept losing our audio. I apologize for that. If the audio is, if that's a, a two-way problem, I will go through and re-record this to send it out. But um, hoping that those were just intermittent and I'm not sure why they happened, I do apologize. I'll be sending out a recording of this webinar and you can download the deck from our website. You'll get that in your follow-up audit as well. To my helpers, are there any questions that have come in? Okay, with that then, I'll give everybody back a half an hour. I hope to hear from you and we'll be having another webinar on a similar topic within the next month. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye.